<laughs> Holy shit, we did it! How? I don't know. Why? I don't know either. I don't have a good intro for this video because I did not expect to have one day and make it to fucking platinum. But we're here. We can do this. We actually could make it to diamond. We just have to keep... <laughs> Feck you, mid-season split. Well, on the upside, at least I get to make another one of these videos. Plus, if you haven't heard, uh, Apex is broken again this week. Guys, get it together. I didn't get reset because I uh, was at work and couldn't play, so that was a lucky... Hmm, never thought I'd be thankful for that much overtime. Anyway, that works. So not really being able to play ranked this week, that kind of put a wrench in my plans, but that's okay. With a new rank comes a new top 10 dumb lessons in my first season of gold. The other guy's not here because uh, I don't have sound treatment in this room and I'm currently in a blanket for it. So anyway, let's get into it. Number 10, Team Synergy. Now at this point in the ranked Apex ladder, it's not exactly a make it or break it decision what your team comp is, as in by no means is it going to change the outcome if you're gonna win or lose the fight. It's not that important yet, but it is something you do need to start thinking about. Specifically in gold, for some reason, a lot of players, unless they main a support legend, really don't wanna play them. For some reason, they think they're gonna get more value out of other legends at this point, where while that might be true if they're completely capable of carrying on a Pathfinder or Wraith, the more important thing to think about in gold is you are going to die at some point. And with a support legend and with the new crafter, which we'll get to, you have the ability to quickly retrieve and res your teammates if they die on drop. Personally, I am a support player mainly, so that kind of helps me out in this regard, but I've run into plenty of teams that just will not run one. And if you get entirely murked off drop, you're kind of screwed if someone even is able to get away. They have to solo the rest of the game, which turns into just playing life. And that's not exactly fun to be a part of. I guess the real takeaway there is if you already have a Bangalore and a Blood Hound, for instance, suck it up and round out your gold team with a support player. It'll give you a better chance of getting further into the game and gaining more RP, and that's what it's all about. Number nine using comms or accurately pinging enemies. Now look, I get it, not everyone likes talking on the mic, even myself, I really didn't use this until the very tail end of gold one because I kinda had no choice, I had to start communicating somehow other than pings. But if you really, really don't want to speak to your teammates and don't want to talk on the mic, the best thing you can do is accurately ping where the enemies are coming from, not just spam it like this. That shit isn't helping anybody. Instead, get familiar with your ping wheel on regrouping. Here enemies here, someone's been here, they're rezzing over here. You can actually throw out a lot of information with very few pings. And to that point, if they're jumping off to go flank your teammate, and instead of spamming him the whole time he's running and just throw out a couple of pings that he's, hey, he's over here, that is entirely more helpful than ruining the sound for your teammate of you constantly pinging and your legends trying to talk and do their voice lines. Please, for the love of God, stop doing that. It's so fucking annoying. And to the other point, because I don't feel like I need to say it, comms are extremely important. So if you can get yourself to speak on the mic, the odds of you doing better or even winning a game go up about tenfold because basic communication in gold is something every team just doesn't have. And you know the teams that have it because they punish you for the smallest mistakes. Comms are important. I really need to use them. I don't. I don't know why I do this shit. I don't know. Don't have a good excuse. Anyway, Moving on, number eight, the new Evo system. I feel like this really is a dumb lesson that I kind of had to learn because I really didn't get it. But for the love of God, do damage where you can. It counts towards your Evo and go pick up those Evo caches if they're close by. And I'm not saying run to the other end of the map to get one, but if you're running from circle and it's a little bit out of the way, it's usually worth it to grab it. The amount of times I've been or run into teams in the top five with white shields because they didn't do wild, life camps, they took no fights, or they didn't grab the Evo caches, or you know, any of the other plethora of things you can do to gain Evo. And let, let's just face the facts here, if you're in the top five with white shields, you're getting murked the second someone figures out you have no shields. If everybody else is on purple and red and you're on white, you, you're, you're in so much trouble, it's not even funny. And because they kinda took armor swapping out to a degree and you don't gain the full armor, you just get like an oversized conduit heal, just hoping to shield swap late in the game is not viable as it sounds. I've tried it, doesn't work, and that's why it took me so damn long to get out of gold. But anyway, we're not talking about that. Number seven, 
your duty as a jump master. This one's gonna be a little weird, but hear me out. Okay, so how many times have you loaded into the dropship, found out your jump master, and immediately given it up? No one? Really? Because everybody freaking gives it up, myself included. I only recently stopped, but I'm gonna give you a couple of things that I do with it just to alleviate some of the stress of hot dropping and immediately getting your team killed. Which, by the way, if you like hot dropping, which we will get to hot dropping in a minute, it's perfectly fine. Honestly, I'd kind of encourage it in gold because you kind of need to get used to fighting early, but that's another point that we will get to. Anyway, here's like my number one thing with Jump Master. Find a highly populated area and land just outside of it at a smaller area, grab your guns, and then go fight. You do not have to land with the other 17 squads that are dropping at estates. It just is not going to go well if you're not comfortable fighting early. What you can do is drop off to those little smaller areas, grab a couple of guns, and then try to pick people off. It works good most of the time, and well, eh. yeah, your teammates might not get it at first, but this goes back to calming. If you kind of explain it like land here, then we're going here, some of them are very much down because it means it alleviates the stress of hot dropping, and you actually might be able to get some early kills, which is great for the RP. But uh, yeah, still don't like Jump Master. I don't know why, it just rubs me the wrong way. I always think I'm gonna get everybody killed and uh, existential crisis. Moving on. Number six. I'm gonna keep this one really short. The Crafter. Use it, please. Th this, this is just one thing I genuinely don't get. It's an instant craft for a shield battery or a med kit or more ammo. Hell, half the time you get rezzed, you're close enough by one where you can just run over and refill your ammo immediately. But for some ungodly reason, people just don't use the things. And look, I get it. I know they're one-time use. So if you're hoping if your team dies, you can run back to it and get your banners crafted. But if you don't have a support, it doesn't matter. And then on top of that, how about just give yourself a better chance of winning the fight? Grab an extra shield battery or an extra med kit before you get to the fight and then all it is is a seven second hide where you can get your shields back so it gives you a higher chance it's just better all around to use the damn thing so please freaking use them well now that i said that i don't think i use them that often so uh hmm, I'm gonna take my own advice on that one number five Reviving your teammates is extremely dangerous. Okay, this one might be a doozy. So it's not really a secret that when you revive your teammates, anyone in the immediate area or even rotating to you is going to see it. It's too high up and it's too hard to miss. Not only that, but the immediate area, they're also gonna hear it and it's gonna disappear from the map. So essentially when you res, it's like kind of ringing the dinner bell because it also means weak players. Personally, it's actually something I used. If I saw a dropship coming in, we were immediately running to that revive spot to try to mark that team because if it's one person coming down that's an easy kill if it's two it's an easy team wipe so i'm not saying don't revive your teammates that would be horrible what i'm saying is you need to at least think about where you're resing them and if it's in the last couple of circles you really need to be careful where you're resing i want to tie in here that's why the mobile respawn beacon is so so valuable especially in gold for one it gives you a vast array of options of where to res someone and also it can be a very nice distraction because when you put it down, believe me, other teams nearby are gonna see it. And hey, they might be looking to revive someone too, so something that you can do, I don't know how good of an idea it is. I've done it a couple times, but I throw down a mobile respawn and I run to the normal respawn beacon because I think they're gonna go to one of them and most likely the one that's closer. So if you can kind of distract them, it kind of works out most of the time. Let's, let's go with some of the time. My point is reviving is very important to your survival in a game and how well you do, but you do need to think about it. Don't immediately run to the first respawn beacon you can find. Take your time and try to sneak maybe a little bit further out, go in a weird direction where maybe teams aren't coming from, or if it's not late in the game, I need to preference that if it's not late in the game for the circle, you can go into the circle to res. Some teammates really don't like that and don't get it, but if the circle's not doing chunk damage, it's a better option than doing it out in the open in between 17 different teams. It's just not gonna work out. The amount of deaths off reses I had in the last week was sending me up a damn wall. Think before you res. Number four. Weapon confidence. Okay, we're on to the big ones. This one actually just recently popped onto the list because uh, it's something that I'm realizing is way more important than I had previously considered. So as long as you're in ranked, it feels like it's infinitely more important to play with the guns you are confident with than kind of just running with whatever you were able to pick up. I know that's broad and sweeping and kind of would make sense to anybody, but just hear me out really quick because I don't know why this didn't click for me until just recently. See, typically when I land, I'll pick up the first two guns that I... It 
at least know I can shoot and maybe hit the target with, and then immediately start kidding them out, which isn't exactly bad, but then I run into a gun that I know I'm consistent and confident with, and I don't want to drop the gun I'm shaky on. For a better example, I'm talking about the hemlock. For the love of God, I cannot figure that gun out, and I'm just wildly inconsistent with it. It's either three bursts and he's down, or I've wasted all the ammo in my inventory. There is no in-between. And the reason I didn't drop it is because I might have a purple heavy mag. I might have a sight that goes well on it. I might have a barrel stabilizer that's not going to go on the other gun. So in that moment, it feels like, why would I reset down to a lower tiered weapon when I have a kitted weapon? But that was hanging me up for so long. No, if you're consistent with a nemesis over a hemlock like I am, drop the freaking hemlock and pick up the nemesis. You're going to get more value out of it. For whatever reason, I just ignored this for the longest time. I was like, oh, I have a longbow and a alternator and I don't really, I'm not really comfortable with either, but I'm going to keep them because I have attachments, but that doesn't make sense. No, just drop the longbow, pick up a 30-30 or a triple take, which I'm a little more consistent with if I really wanted a sniper in that moment, and drop the alternator and pick up an RE-35. They use most of the same attachments too. I don't know why I can't get over that hurdle of not switching the gun out for something I know I'm better with just because I've had it in my inventory for a while. This might entirely be a me problem. I think this is going to sound crazy, but we're running with it. So the point I'm trying to make, and I'll give you an example for me, there's a handful of guns I know I'm consistent with. That's going to be the R301. Gee, I'm fucking shocked I'm consistent with that one. It's a good weapon if you're just starting. It is actually a very good weapon if you're just starting because it's very easy to use. Anyway, so the R301, the Nemesis, the RE45, the Volt, and the Mastiff are pretty much my go-to weapons, and I know I can hit the shots I'm taking when I'm using those guns. So in a ranked setting, yes, it would make more sense for me to seek out these weapons, even if I have to drop specific attachments and change it up. Because we all know, whenever you first land, you never find the guns you want. You always wind up with a flipping charge rifle and a P2020 or whatever the hell that piece of crap is called. I've actually been told that gun's not horrible. I just, I, 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 I suck. I, wait, let's get past that hurdle. I suck. Moving on. But yeah, consistency with a couple of weapons, even if you're, you don't really change game to game, there's not a lot of variety, is going to bring you further than just trying to pick up what you land on. For me, the hurdle I need to get over is I am horrible with the Peacekeeper. I know it's very, very powerful, especially when it's fully kitted, even when it isn't. It's a very powerful shotgun, but the only consistency with that gun with me is I'm going to miss four out of the five shots, and the fifth one's probably not going to hit the whole spread. Don't ask how I can't fire a frying pan. I don't know either. And if I happen to pick up a disruptor, I won't drop it for a Mastiff because I'm like, but I have the hop up. Shut up and just pick up the damn Mastiff. At least then you're going to hit three of the five shots. That's better than one. So yeah, that was a big one. Uh, Might be a me problem. Probably is. But uh, yeah, just stay with the guns that you know you're consistent with and ranked. Yeesh, that was a long one. Anyway, moving on. Number three ability upgrades. Okay, for this particular case, I'm not gonna say which heroes are better or worse. You can make that decision for yourself. The only thing I'm gonna say is you have to read the ability upgrades, especially in this season. I know it's new and it could disappear next season, but for season 20, it is wildly important what your abilities do and what you gain out of these Evo upgrades. Some legends have way better upgrades than others. I'm just gonna leave it there, but please read them and understand that with the amount of play the abilities are getting and the amount of focus on them this season, picking a legend who really doesn't get that great of upgrades can actually make or break fights. We've all seen some of those ability upgrades that it's like, oh, you can see the cells in a box or you can see the grenades in a box. It's like, that's great for one particular legend. But meanwhile, you have other things that might give you a second Q, might give you more healing, might give you more shields, might make your ultimate more powerful or cool down faster, might ridiculous improve your movement if you're actually good at taking out teams on your own or with another team and you actually knock them down and now your movement's reset so you're a pain in the ass to fucking kill. My point is in this entire thing is that you gotta at least go through and read them. I know all of us are attached to certain legends, myself included. It just kind of so happens the ones I'm attached to tended to be a little bit more favored when they were going through the upgrades for Evo. But if you're attached to a legend who really kind of got shafted on the upgrades, you might want to consider switching off just for this season. We have no idea if they're going to come back or they're gonna keep these. But if you're trying to grind and you're trying to climb in season 20, it's probably for the best that you actually kinda use the meta a little bit and look at the abilities, take time to think about it and look at your main and think, hmm, might not be the season for you, bud. That was weirdly hard to record without name dropping a bunch of legends. Because yeah, some of them just, just suck right now. And others are broken as shit, but I mean, what are you gonna do when they're trying to balance the game? So anyway, number two, fight early, loot mid, 
third late. That might have been gibberish, but again, hear me out. Said that a lot this time, but just give me a second. Okay, so the first thing I want to get out of the way, specifically in gold, is you start off negative 40 RP. In the previous season that I played, don't know if it tracks for other seasons before that, surviving to the top 10 meant you weren't going to lose anything. However, here we are in season 20 that until you get to the top five, you are still negative in gold and beyond. And in fact, even if you make it to the top five without a single fight, you just manage to bob and weave around every team, you're only gaining five RP. Yes, there's a bonus for making it top five, but we're not talking about that because doing that consistently without ever seeing a fight is nearly impossible. Trust me, I tried. I know I'm a bitch. Shut up. So back to the fight early, loot mid and third late. That's the structure I have made almost every single one of my rank games in gold. I know I'm going to have to adjust it in platinum and I'm really not looking forward to that. But essentially it boils down to we actually start hot dropping and trying to win that first fight to negate 20 of your RP entry penalty. That way, at least if you make it to the top 10, you won't be losing RP and you have a chance to gain it. Honestly, if you can kill one or two teams off drop and completely negate your penalty in the beginning, you'll be positive starting at the 13th squad. After that, then you can run around and try to find unlooted areas and actually try to loot up. Fighting in the early game is easier because everyone has white shields or maybe just into blue and those fights are much shorter and they're much easier to win. Now, I'm not saying don't fight the mid game. If you have an obvious chance to fight, do it. Be smart about it though. Because I mean, we a lot of us need to face the facts that we're not the top tier players. We're not able to mark every single team we come across. So for the average player, sometimes it's just smarter to not take the stupid fights and only take the fights you know you can win. This goes back to positioning from the last video, but hey, we kind of fixed that this season, sort of. But then when you get to the end and there might be three or four squads left, then it is your chance when you're purple shielded, fully kitted, have everything you need. Now is the time to cause as much damage as you can to everybody around you in hopes that they get picked off by the small circle and the amount of squads around you. Personally, if there's only three squads left and I hear two teams fighting, I'm sprinting there because I don't want to give either winning team a chance to get their shields back and reset a fight. If you can jump on them before they can get prepared for it, you're going to win the fight, especially if you're coming in full shield and guns a blazing. And don't get me wrong, hot dropping is a learning curve. I don't care what anybody says because it's inherently different than how you would fight in the middle of the game. You have to make really quick decisions and you really have to just work with what you landed on. For me, nine times out of 10, it's a flipping charge rifle and son of a bitch, I'm screwed in that situation. But yeah, if you hot drop in the beginning, you're gonna die a lot. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Maybe try it in pubs a lot first, but get used to how it feels. It's more about movement and just kind of getting your shots in and killing someone as quickly as possible. And for the love of God, Thirst someone if you can. Don't just down them and run away. I do this way too much. Down, run away. Then he gets res. Now it's a three man again. So that's a problem. No, if you down someone and you have a second, thirst them immediately. It takes a whole player out of the game and turns a three squad into a two squad. So now you even have a better chance. That's all you can really ask for off a hot drop. The amount of times I saw even in like gold two and gold one that people are still waiting till there's like nine or three people left in the ship to jump means they're going to go for the slow play, which means we have less of a chance to negate our penalty and if you don't fight and you don't have a chance to get all the loot you need and upgrade your evo you might be going into the final three squads with blue shields and you're screwed someone's gonna hit you realize you have blue shields they could have purple or red and you're just in trouble because to that point again back to the abilities they also have another upgrade on their abilities they really can murk you if they are the right team comp how do i know all this because it happened a million times you would not believe how many flipping games i played between gold two and gold one to get into platinum it was freaking ridiculous yeah because that one was long than I thought it was going to be, but it's kind of important. Anyway, on to number one. Number one, you are going to lose RP and that's okay. I know this one might be completely out of left field compared to the rest of the list, but just listen. How many times have you gone through a session of ranked, you're winning games, you're ending matches, top 10, top five, top three consistently, and you are flying through your division only to get right to the cusp and all of a sudden minus 40. Minus 35, minus 30, minus 40, minus 40, minus 40, minus 40, and you are right back to the beginning of your division. A lot, right? Well, at least it did for me. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's fucking frustrating. To watch all that work might be across a couple of hours disappear in a matter of maybe 30 minutes because you are landing and dying every single game. Personally, just for a recent example, with gold one, this happened six or seven times that I went to the high 600s and back 
under 100 in one instance, which was terrifying, but all the way back to the beginning of the division. The mistake I made, and it's so fucking dumb, is I kept going. Listen, we all have to kind of be honest with ourselves here. At least 85% of us won't admit it. But when you're falling and ranked like that, you're gonna be tilted. Unless you're doing it on purpose. And in that case, fuck you. But anyway, we're talking to the people who were not doing it on purpose. First off, it's gonna happen to everybody at some point. You're gonna get very close to your next rank and you're just gonna fall through your division again. And the best piece of advice I can give you, and this is not coming from a masterful player. I am painfully average, even below average in this game. But when I lost or got minus 40, four or five times in a row, just go play trios or just get up and walk away for a little bit. It doesn't help anybody when you start playing and before you even get out of the drop ship, you're looking at your team going, oh, here comes minus 40. It's just not a good way to start and it's gonna set you up for failure. You're gonna make stupid decisions because you're tilted. You're gonna turn around and blame your team that might not have done anything. And the second you get on the mic or you start typing, you're gonna tilt them and then they don't really wanna help you. That's not a personal experience, but I did run into a game where a guy pretty much ran away from us to go 1v3, got killed and started screaming at us through the comms. And it was wildly confusing because I don't understand why if you are having a bad couple of games, you try to tilt the teammates on your team that you need to do well in order to do well in this game. So for your own sake and for other players sake, if you are in a nosedive of RP, just walk away for like 10, 20 minutes or hell, just go play trios. That way, if you lose, you're not losing anything. It kind of puts it back into perspective and then you go in with a fresh head and you're not making rash decisions just because you're frustrated. That comes from a personal place. Like I didn't know when to stop. I just kept going and it got to a point where I'd be in the screen where it shows your squad. I'd look at their stats and be like, oh, here comes minus 40, which is wild to think about because my stats are fucking horrible. But it just goes back to the tilted. I'm not okay with losing. I'm not okay with losing RP, but what I need to be okay with if I'm going to continue doing this is it is going to happen. You can't win every single game. Well, I mean, if you're Timmy or Fade or Hal, maybe you can. But for this aggressively average crow, no, it's not going to fucking happen. I'm going to lose more games than I'm going to win. The important thing is to keep my damn head on my shoulders, not get super negative. And if I'm in a nosedive, go do something else for a little bit. And that's about it. That's all I wanted to say. And I wanted to bring that up just because the experience in gold one and the amount of people who come and die and immediately go scorched earth on the team just kind of got me thinking like, okay, this has to be what happens in the nosedive. And then when I went into all those nosedives, sure enough, I'm prejudging my own team in the entry screen haven't even seen them shoot or play and I'm already like, nope, we're losing 40. Bah, 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 I'm mad, bah. <laughs> the fuck? No, at the end of the day, the game's supposed to be fun. So if you're in a nosedive losing RP, just walk away, go have some fun in trios, do something else. It's not that serious. Well, that's about it for me on this one, honestly. I just kind of like doing this whenever I hit a new rank because it makes me reflect on what I did in the previous rank. And uh, being this new at the game and actually making it this far is kind of interesting. I don't know if I'm doing something very right or I am just the luckiest motherfucker in the world. I really need to go play that Powerball, huh? But anyway, have fun. Don't worry about losing RP. Keep climbing. I had something else and I can't remember now. Anyway, I guess that was it. See ya.